Research has shown that cold emailing generates higher return on investment than any other form of lead generation. In this video, we will go through a step-by-step -step guide on how you can generate leads through cold emailing. We will go through our five-step frost fire framework that will give you an extra edge to achieve the results that you desire. So stay tuned throughout this video. The first step in our frost fire framework is to research. Within this, you first need to identify who is your ideal target. Now a question may arise in your head. Why put in the effort to create a small but targeted audience when you can send emails to a large group and increase your chances of response? So here's the catch. Mass emailing people without considering their specific needs will not be effective. In fact, according to a recent report by Gartner, only 23.9% of sales emails are opened. To improve your chances of a response, it is important to ensure that your email is sent to the right person. Now, once you identify your ideal target, the next step in this process would be to create an ideal customer profile. An ideal customer profile contains details of individuals in a company who would benefit the most from your product or service. It identifies the most valuable prospects and customers who are most likely to make a purchase. To identify your ideal customers, begin by analyzing your existing customer database. Based on what you've gathered, create a list of key customer characteristics you'd like to see in your ideal customer, and this can be thought of as a behavioral profile of sorts. So some characteristics to consider may include uh, location, company size, age range, annual revenue, industry, technologies and software is used, department, and budget. So after gathering all the available data from your top customers, what you want to do is you want to look for commonalities by comparing all the profiles. Certain patterns may be readily apparent while others may require a closer examination. So once you identify the most prevalent patterns, it's time to formalize your data. By the way, to save your time, we have already created an ideal customer profile template for you to use, and this can be found in the description below. After you've created your ideal customer profile, the next step is to find your prospects. So in the world of sales, prospecting, of course, is an essential process that involves identifying new prospects through careful research, initiating conversations with them, and ultimately providing them with valuable solutions that can address their specific needs and pain points. Prospecting typically begins with researching and analyzing your ideal prospects. By understanding your products and services and the type of buyers they cater to, you can focus your efforts on the right segment of the market. With proper research, you can identify potential prospects from your leads and gain valuable resources that can help you create a list of potential prospects. There are a variety of tools available to help you with prospecting. Here are a few prospecting tools that we suggest. Uh, we have Apollo, we have Lucia, and we have Sales Handy Connect. By taking advantage of these resources and employing a comprehensive prospecting strategy, you can improve your chances of success in the highly competitive world of sales. The next step in our five-step frost fire framework is setup and deliverability. In this step, you first need to choose a good domain. When you use your primary domain for cold emailing, it can negatively impact your domain reputation, particularly if you want to achieve high open and response rates for your emails, as some ESPs may flag your emails as spam if they all come from a single domain. This could lead to your primary domain getting blacklisted if too many of your emails are flagged as spam. Having a secondary domain can prevent this from happening and increase the chances of your emails reaching their intended recipients. It also makes it easier to segment and target your emails, enabling you to tailor your messages to different groups of people and improve their effectiveness. In the future, having secondary domains and accounts can help you increase your email sending volume without harming your domain reputation. Here are a few things to remember when purchasing domains and email accounts. First thing is that you should make sure your domain is unique and stands out from your competitors. The second thing is look for domains that protect your data. Make sure you use trustworthy registrars that won't misuse your data in any way. The third point is that you should check the email service provider's sending limits and know if it aligns with your needs. Lastly, look for email service providers that support important security authentications like SPF and DKIM, which as we know are essential protocols to prove that you are a genuine sender and keep your accounts safe from spammers. Once you've chosen a good domain, the next step is that you need to warm up your email account. So as we mentioned, email deliverability is a crucial aspect of cold email outreach. It's been reported that over 20% of emails fail to reach the inbox. One of the major reasons behind this issue is a lack of warm-up process for new email accounts. Email warm-up is a process of establishing a reputation for a new email account and gradually increasing its sending limit. It involves sending emails from a new email account, starting with a small number and gradually increasing the number of emails sent each day. To warm up an email account before sending out a cold email, you can use two methods. 
manual or automated. The manual method, of course, requires a lot of time and effort so you can gradually build a reputation of your new email account. On the other hand, the automated method is the most recommended option because it's an effortless way to warm up your email account. Tools like Sales Handy automate the email warm-up process, allowing you to grow your email reputation and improve your email deliverability. By automating the warm-up process, you can save time and effort and ensure that your emails are delivered straight to the primary inbox of your recipients. This in turn can increase the chances of your cold email outreach being successful, resulting in more replies and conversions. Next up, we have authentication records. So authentication records are an important step when it comes to deliverability. You are mistaken if you think hitting the send button and having a valid email address will ensure your email is delivered successfully because no, that's not all it takes. Authentication records, simply put, is a set of steps that need to be followed in order to place your emails in the primary inbox of your recipients. The first one is DKIM, which stands for Domain Keys Identified Emails. The second one is SPF, which stands for Sender Policy Framework. And we have DMARC, which stands for Domain-Based Message Authentication Reporting and Confirmance. Then we also have Mail Exchange Records. And lastly, we have Custom Tracking. Don't worry, we've made a video on each one of these records and how you can set them up. And the link can be found in the description below. The next step in our framework is to write. There are five things you need to make sure of while writing cold emails, and these include subject line, personalization, offering value, call to actions, and follow-ups. So let's look into each of these one by one. First one, make a compelling subject line. The subject line of your email is one of the most critical components in achieving a successful email campaign. Research has shown that more than 33% of email recipients decide whether to open an email solely based on the subject line. This is why it is crucial to take time and effort to create a compelling and memorable subject line that entices your prospects to click on your email and read it. To craft the perfect subject line, here's what you can do. Avoid using spammy language as that can trigger spam filters. Try to personalize the subject line as much as possible by using personal data. Keep your subject line short and to the point. Excite your prospect's curiosity with an intriguing subject line and make sure you are honest about your offers. Finally, A-B testing can help you determine which subject lines are more successful in prompting email opens so you can refine your approach and improve your open rates over time. Moving on into the writing process, the next thing we have is personalizing your email. So when it comes to cold emailing, personalization can make all the difference. Generic copy-pasted emails are likely to be ignored or deleted. But emails that are personalized can make a real impact and resonate with the recipient. One of the simplest ways to personalize an email is by using the recipient's name. But there's much more you can do to add a personal touch. So for example, you can do a little research on the recipient to find out more about them and their business. Uh, you can find mutual connections or personal pain points that you can reference in your email. In addition to their first name, you can also include their designation, company name, and other personal details that show that you have done your homework. If you find something particularly interesting or relevant during your research, you can even quote it in your email to show that you have a genuine interest in the recipient and their business. The next step in the writing process is to remember to keep your email short and sweet. It is essential to understand that when it comes to cold emailing, the individuals on the other side of the email are often busy. As a result, it is crucial to be respectful of their time and ensure that the email's content is concise and to the point. In fact, business professionals receive a large volume of emails every day with an average of 129 emails per day. In order to capture their attention and make an impact, make sure that your email stands out from the crowd. There is new research that shows that cold emails that range from 50 to 125 words tend to receive the highest response rate. This is most likely because these type of emails get straight to the point and capture the attention of the recipient in just 15 to 20 seconds. Now the next step in the writing process is that you should offer value in your cold email. They want to know why they were contacted. So once you have a great opening line, get straight to the point and talk about the reasons for reaching out, how your organization is going to add value to their life, the advantages of starting a professional business relationship with you, case studies showcasing how other organizations have benefited from what you are offering. The next step in the writing process is to include a call to action. When it comes to cold emailing, it is important to have a clear and concise call to action that encourages the recipient to take the desired action. A call to action can be in the form of scheduling a Zoom meeting, signing up for a free trial, or any other appropriate action. By using an effective CTA, you can increase the chances of converting prospects into lead and ultimately growing your business. So the next step in the writing process is ensuring that you have a follow-up cycle. When it comes to follow-up cycles, you can adopt one of two strategies. 
a time-based sequence or an intent-based sequence. A time-based sequence involves consistently emailing prospects with seven to eight touch points with timely intervals in between. This strategy ensures that each prospect on your list receives equal attention regardless of where they are in their buyer's journey. On the other hand, the intent-based sequence is more focused on the interest of prospects. Only those prospects that are in the solution searching stage of their buyer's journey are targeted. These prospects are identified using intent signals such as reply rates, link clicks, open rates, or downloads. Intent-based sequences are particularly valuable because they enable you to target the right prospects and they're also more personalized, which can help you increase your conversion rates. The next step in our framework is to analyze. After crafting and sending your cold emails, it is essential to analyze the results. Your email deliverability is the first thing that you should measure. Email deliverability in cold emailing refers to the ability of your cold emails to reach the inbox of your ideal prospects or recipients and not land in the spam or junk folder. Here are a few metrics that can help you decide your cold emailing deliverability. A bounce rate higher than 3% can compromise your email deliverability. A delivery rate of 95% or higher is considered good by most email service providers. And lastly, if your spam rate, which is the emails being marked as spam by recipients, exceeds 0.01%, then you have a higher risk of losing your account. The next metric to measure is your click-through rate. According to a recent study, the average CTR for cold emails is 2.3%. However, it may differ from industry to industry, so you can use this as an initial benchmark for when you are starting with cold emailing for your lead generation. The next metric is the unsubscribe rate. The unsubscribe rate tells you how many email recipients unsubscribe from your emails either by clicking an unsubscribe link or by sending you a reply asking to stop emailing. Every cold email campaign you send will have people unsubscribe or asking you to stop. And just to let you know, it's pretty normal to have negative replies. However, if you're seeing a large portion of recipients unsubscribing from your cold emails, then you should be worried. So what is an average unsubscribe rate? According to Campaign Monitor, the industry-wide average unsubscribe rate for cold emailing is 0.1%. The next metric we have is the open rate. You can determine whether your emails are being opened or ignored by looking at your open rates. The open rate is an important metric to keep track so that you can make sure your message is getting across to your recipients. Now you might have a question, what is considered a good open rate? According to Task Drive, 25% or more is a good open rate for your cold email outreach campaign. And if you hit over 37%, consider your campaign very, very successful. The last and final metric to analyze is your reply rate. So the reply rate refers to the percentage of your total sent emails that receive a reply. To understand reply rates better, here is an example. Suppose you sent 1000 emails and got 100 replies, then your cold emailing reply rate is 10%. Now you might have a question, so what is a good reply rate? Though there is no such strong accurate research or survey done in the past, according to some cold emailing experts, the average email reply rate should be from 10% to 20% of the total email sent. The last and final step in our Frostfire framework is to optimize. After analyzing your cold emailing results, the next step is to optimize and make the necessary adjustments to improve your future campaigns. Here are a few things to consider for optimizing your cold emailing campaigns for lead generation. The first thing you could consider optimizing is timing. One of the critical factors to consider when optimizing your cold emailing campaign is the timing of your outreach. It's important to understand which times work best for your target audience and the industry you're targeting. For instance, if your target audience is tech companies, for example, sending your emails on Monday mornings might be the perfect timing. However, if you're targeting HR professionals, afternoons may work best. The next thing to optimize is the email length. The ideal email length and the type of content within the email that works best for you may differ based on the preferences of different industries. Research has shown that cold emails ranging between 50 to 125 words have received the highest response rates. However, it's important to test out different lens and types of content to see what works best for your audience and of course make the necessary adjustments. Now, the last thing you can optimize is the value that you provide. Optimal open rates but low reply rates indicate that you need to rethink your value proposition. To make your offer more relevant to your ICP, you need to restructure it and write a new pitch or CTA. Because it's obvious, if your open rates are high and your reply rates are low, then your email content is of course not relevant to your target audience. And as we all know, relevance is key in any type of business, even in cold emailing. In a nutshell, analyzing the results of your cold email campaign, making the required adjustments can help you improve your future campaign's effectiveness. By understanding your target audience's preferences, you can optimize your timing and content, resulting in better response rates and ultimately more successful outreach efforts. But wait, that's not all. You can start seeing results at an accelerated speed if you use cold emailing software. 
A cold emailing software like Sales Handy will allow you to automate this entire process, provide you with analytics to make data-driven decisions, and ultimately serve you with features that can make a huge difference to your lead generation. So what are you waiting for? Sign up to Sales Handy for free from the link provided in the description below.